Hello there, everybody. This is Peter Beckenham, the village marketer. And as always, talking to you from my little Thai village, way up near the Cambodian border. My topic for you today is how to be a shy sales success. How to be a shy sales success. The reason I want to share this topic is because quite a few people have been talking to me recently who actually are shy. Lewis, thanks for joining. Good to see you, mate. So some people have joined me in conversations who they, they're shy. John, thank you. Good to see you, John Moss. Good to see you. Um, these people are shy. And not only are they shy, they, they are lacking in confidence because they haven't had the success in sales they've got. Lisa, thank you for joining. Good to see you. Good to see you. So how to be a shy sales success, okay? Let's start right from the word go. Let's, let's get rid of one traditional sales myth, all right? And that is you do not have to persuade or convince anybody these days by pitching your offer with a smile and a fancy set of clothes. Don't do that. You don't need to do that, right? Today, it's all about sales conversations, okay? And I'll be quite honest with you, just, just for interest, it's been good to see you. Thank you very much for joining. And Lynette, thank you for joining me as well. I really appreciate you. Hang in there with me if you can, all right? I, I just for interest, I looked at the top 10 selling sales books on Amazon, okay? And you know what? Nearly all of them were written more than 20 or 30 years ago. Unbelievable. Sure, they were brilliant at the time. And there's some famous names amongst them. There's no doubt about that. But, but life has moved on. And those sales techniques don't work anymore. And that's maybe the reason why if you're a fraction shy, that you haven't really come to the fore in sales because you've been exposed to all this other training, so to speak, or resources, and you're thinking, oh, I can never do that. Well, you don't have to. That's my point too. Hey, Myra and Pearl, lovely to see you. And Julia, thank you very much. Really appreciate you guys being here. I hope you get a lot of value from this one, all right? I'm talking about shy people being success in sales, right? And I'm talking about the fact there's many resources available that have been out there for 20 or 30 years, okay? All I'm saying to you is this. Do not worry about that, okay? Do not worry about that. Even whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, it doesn't really matter because the key issue, the thing that separates the top 5% of the most successful salespeople from the other 95%, guess what that is? It's got nothing to do with ego. It's got nothing to do with knowledge. It's got nothing to do with anything else except one thing. They educate. They educate. They give awesome value and they never, ever pitch. That's the difference. And just so you understand this, the top 5% in the sales profession, the top 5% earn more than the other 95% all added up together, right? And you can be in that top 5% if you stop doing what the 95% are doing. I'm going to share two things with you today. So even the shyest person can avoid that stupid mistake that the 95% make, all right? So you can do this. However, if I said to you, what is your biggest problem right now when it comes to sales? I mean, you probably think, and I'm not, this is a rhetorical question. You haven't got to put that in your comments, right? All I'm saying is this, but you may be thinking, ah, my problem is prospecting, or my problem is closing the sale, or my problem is talking on the telephone, or my problem is talking about the price of my particular offer, or whatever it may be, okay? Now, they are all realistic. They are realistic. There's no doubt about that. But perhaps the biggest problem you have is a problem you don't even know. You've got just yet. Okay? And this is a problem because you don't even realize you've got it. Then how can you fix it? And you could be doing something every single day that you are putting down your, your uh, failures to, to, to things like I'm too shy or I'm not confident or, I, or I'm lacking in self-belief or I'm not sure of myself. But really it could be something completely different. And I'm not getting deep and meaningful on you here. I just want to share some thoughts with you, okay? Let me do this. Let's be brutally blank. Right? Get it right, Peter. 
brutally blunt with you, all right? Get the words right. When people push back on you, in other words, they reject you. I don't. I know you don't like to hear that word, but they reject your offer, not you as a person, right? They reject you, or maybe you actually, when you think about it, they reject you for a couple of reasons. One, they don't think the offer you are giving is worth the price that you want. So you haven't sold the value of what you're doing. Or two, they don't believe that you can give the value and deliver what you say you're going to deliver. Or three, this is where it comes into the shy people, okay? You may be exhibiting and sending out messages to people that you are unsure of yourself when it comes to the point of saying, this is what I can do for you and it's going to cost you $1,500. And the word sort of so gets stuck in your mouth coming out because you're not you, 1,500 or 3,500 or whatever it may be, right? The actual even saying of the words scares the pants off you because you don't want to lose them because you really want to get some success, right? But the way that you say that and the way it comes out does create a problem for you and you could be killing yourself. There's no doubt about that. How can you overcome that? You can practice it. and That's another point for another day. I'll come back to that, all right? The key issue is you need to identify what your real problem is, all right? But how, therefore, can a shy, completely lacking in self-confidence person become a success in sales and become an authority, a perceived authority in the eyes of their prospects? Because you might think they've got no chance. Well, they can, and if you're shy, you can, okay? The first thing is this, the first thing to do, be different. Be completely distinct from everybody else, okay? In other words, think about this. If you are perceived to be a salesperson, okay, then that conjures up in people's minds, you know, I haven't, I haven't got a cigar and things, right? but here I am. Let's picture me sitting back here in a used car lot with a big fat cigar, smoking away on my cigar, right, with a big gold chain around my neck, okay, and a Hawaiian shirt, okay, and the dark glasses on. You know what I'm talking about, right? That's the conjuring picture of a salesperson, right? And that's the last thing you want to be compared to, okay? So what you need to do is be different. So how can you be different? The first thing is this, and if you could write this down, it could help you. The first thing, you've only got seven seconds to get people's attention. If you're just talking on the telephone, for example, for the first time, or you're meeting face to face, you've got basically seven seconds when people are gonna judge you. Now, it might even be less than that. But the bottom line is you've got to have some sort of pattern interrupt, a pattern interrupt, all right? Now, what is that all about? Well, think of this, here's an example. If I just met you for the first time, okay, and I, uh, we're at a networking event or I was on the telephone, whatever it is, doesn't matter, and I simply said, hey, Harry, it's pretty Beckham. How are you today? Right? What do you think Harry thinks? Okay, I'll say it again. Hey, Harry, it's pretty Beckham I'm calling. How are you today? Harry's thinking, holy dooly, who's this guy? Obviously, he's a sales guy. Obviously, he doesn't give a damn about how I am today, but he's asking the question anyway because he's just full of his own importance. That's what it's all about, right? So instead, even if you're a shy person, you wouldn't do that anyway, but even if you're a shy person or anybody, instead try this. Hey, Harry, it's Peter Beckett I'm calling. Did I catch you in the middle of something? I'll say it again. Hey, Harry, it's Peter Beckett I'm calling. Did I catch you in the middle of something? See the complete difference in approach here? Completely different way of tone and also the use of the words. Did I catch you in the middle of something? Not asking you how's your day today when you know damn well they're not interested and they know you're not interested anyway. But did I catch you in the middle of something? You are showing a little bit of respect for their time and their situation, okay? Does it make you different? Of course it does. And by the way, do not use the word, is it okay to talk now? Do you have five minutes to talk now? Don't do that. Simply say, did I catch you in the middle of something? That's all. They don't expect that. You're being different. You're being distinct. All right? Next one. By the way, by the way, even the shyest person can try that. They really can. Right? Truly, you can. Next one. Be aware that when you're first talking to somebody, okay, they're probably thinking, oh, I don't know why I 
I even bother doing business with this person. I don't know why I'm wasting my time thinking about this person. I don't know. That's what's in their head, okay? And even if, and even if they haven't told you, more than likely it's in their head. So here's something, and even if you're the shyest person, I want you to try this because it doesn't take too much intestinal fortitude to try this. What I'm saying is this. Instead of, of ignoring that possibility, be completely transparent about it, truly transparent, and say, Harry, I realise we've only just met, and more than likely you're thinking right now, I mean, why should I be talking to me? Why should you be talking to me, right? And, and why should I be dealing with you anyway, okay? And I appreciate that because we're brand spanking you, okay? There's, there's no reason in the world why you should be talking to me. I appreciate that, okay? They won't expect you to say that, right? They really won't. <laughs> and, and to be quite frank with you, it will be something that differentiates you. It really will. Because what I want you to do is this. When you're thinking about about um, that question that Harry's got in his mind, right? Instead of thinking like a salesperson or like a like a uh, a consultant, right? Don't do that. I want you to think like a doctor. You might think, what are you talking about, Frida? This is what I'm saying. When you this, if you went to the doctor, right, and you've got a you've got a sore knee, right, and you say, hey, doctor, I've got a really sore knee. Would the doctor say to you? Well, Peter, you lucky boy, just in the right place at the right time, okay? We've got this incredible new procedure called arthroscopic surgery. It's unbelievable, right? We just take a tiny incision, we remove all the rough stuff, we sew you up, and in a week you start to walk, and in six weeks you're jogging. So you ready to get started? <laughs> I'm making this up, right? But if the doctor did that to you, how would you feel? You'd think... This guy is a bloody quack, right? Truly a quack. Well, of course you would think that. Well, let me tell you, 95% of the salespeople do exactly the same thing every single day. Think about that. They do. They come on board with their, why should you deal with us? Because we've been online for X, Y, when we've been 50 years as a company, we've got the best customer service, we, 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 right? Think like a doctor. Not like a quack, think like a doctor. So instead, instead what I'd say is this. When the question, you put the question on the table to the prospect, as the shy person, okay, you're probably thinking, should you be dealing with me? Then my answer to you, Harry, would be this. Look, at this point, I'm not sure whether you should do this or something. I'm really not sure. But would it be okay if I ask you a few questions to see what's really going on? And then we can determine if there's something we can sort out together. All right? I'll say it again for you because this is important, okay? Well, Harry, at this point, I'm not sure whether you should do business with me. As a shy person, you could say that, right? Next one, would it be okay if I ask you a few questions to see what's really going on? And then we'll determine if there's something we can sort out together. Even as a shyest person, I think you could do that. And if you did that, I can tell you, you will be treated like a pro. You will be regarded as someone who's not needy. You will be perceived as someone who is very, very professional, okay? And this truly will put even the shyest person in a, a fantastic position because this sets up a trusting relationship and positions you as an authority, as an expert, as someone who truly cares and as someone who's worth listening to. There you go. If you're shy, I hope that helps you. If, it, if you can leave me some thoughts and comments, I would be truly appreciative of that, okay? Thank you very much for sharing your time. Sue, good to see you. Libba, thank you. Hyacinth, thank you. Lisa, Yvonne, everybody, thank you very much. I always truly appreciate you sharing your time with me. And if you got some value from it, please let me know. I enjoy helping in any way I can. Many blessings from Thailand, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.